Builds up your CSS, uh, your your NPMs packages, and then what is that? Yeah, the day on app, app, conference. And it's not just one, but two and three. For iOS, for Android, and for Windows. The Windows go. Let's just know. Para mula na. Ano? Ano mo si Edison? Si Edison na kailan niya? Sa Android na. So these are actually working applications. One, two, three. Wait, there's more. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe next time, we'll have a really ionic session. Because if we're going to type in how to create pages, how to modify updates, we'll have to do that. But I'll show you how it's easy. And then, so now that we have our applications running, now we are ready to. But uh, before I upload this, introduce ko muna yung Ionic. Uh, So, ionicframework.com. So, kailangan mo mag-subscribe to have that account. It's free. Wala siyang bayan. Pero, kung nakikita nyo, wala pa dito si DOCG Meetup na application. Dahil hindi pa natin siya pinupush. So, let's... Uh, let's commit our changes. Pero before natin i-push, let's, let's decipher kung ano yung mga gen na generate ng files, okay? So, ito yung na-generate na setup. So, sino yung gumagamit ng Visual Studio? Code. Yes, code. Yes, code. I would suggest I'm not a Windows fan. But <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the best product of Microsoft. Na in open the community. So I've been using this for a year now. Uh, and so far, uh, as I before, I've been using uh, Atom. But it's a little bit like scratch. Like a crash. But this one, never. So as you can see, here are the different pages. And since this, so kung may kita natin kini na dun sa application, there are several pages. Like when you when we click that, ito yun. About and per page, meron siyang HTML, meron siyang CSS. And there is a TypeScript file. So, let's look at the HTML5 and see what it is. Okay? So, it's a good HTML5. There are a lot of unusual tabs. But this is actually based on Ionic. Like Ion Header, Button, Ion Button. Diba? Mabilis lang natin siya makapag-adapt. Mabilis lang tayo makapag-adapt. And if you're into JavaScript, gagawa ka ng paan, diba? Yung button na clickable. You just click percent pop over. This is a function. And this function can be found in our .ts file. So, pag-check natin yan. So, 
wala pa dal, you still have to create that function. Pero you're going to pull that present pop, uh, the present pop over, ito yung function niya sa that is. Yes. Kung mapapansin niyo, hindi siya gumagamit ng var, it uses let, because that is part of the type scripts. Okay. Diba, very easy to understand. Readable pa. And if you're, if you're, if you're been doing uh, NPM packages, mabilis mo na itong matutunan. Alright. Now, we are ready to push our changes. that changes to our uh, Ionic Framework account. And let's check. Fresh. There. Says here last updated eight minutes ago. So if you check that, Gusto ng boss nito kasi actually hindi pa ako ito pa eh. <laughs> so, uh, meron siyang deploy. May kita lang. Kung yung boss mo kasi, gusto nila na nakikita yung mga changes mo everyday. So, they can uh, they can monitor, they can track down all your changes. And this is actually a win-win for employers. Gandaan pa dito is, I can actually create, I can uh, integrate, I can package a build of iOS, Android, Android, debug, and release. Okay, so um, when we develop a mobile application, before you upload your or release your application, you have to set your uh, debug uh, version. So, what are the differences between the debug and the release version? Debug, ito yung kapag uh, uh, you want to track yung mga console that lag basta JavaScript, you can track down the contents of that console lag. And sa release naman, tinanggal, tatanggalin lahat ng mga console lag uh, display. Kasi nga, for production, di mo na kailangan yung mga ganong uh, information. So to make sure that in your release, in your release uh, version, wala nung mga, mga console na tumatakpo, console lag na tumatakpo. So from here, pwede ka na mag-create ng, uh, ng APK mo. Okay. So pwede kang mag-create ng APK. No. So that is the Ionic. <coughs> Mamaya, babalikan natin yan kung parang i-integrate lahat. Any question, guys? Uh, any questions? Tanong ko lang sa Ionic. Tanong ko lang sa Ionic. Di ba, high good siya. Um, Paano yung mga native na, na functionalities ng isang mobile, mobile app? Hmm. Like, uh, gyroscope, di ba meron? Hmm. Meron sa gyroscope. Uh, like yung GPS. GPS. Ma-access pa rin yun. Ang maganda dito is, si Ironic, alos, alos, alos 90% ng native UI, naka-embed na sa, meron siyang SDK support. Oh. So, mamaya, mapakita natin. Okay. 
Ah, sa application ng uh, uh, sample niya. Okay. And so, this is Paul. <laughs> uh, I work at Pantheon. And I work with this superheroes. Uh, superhero. Oh, probably alam niyo yung mga faces dito. Yung mga taong ito. Uh, and we're doing uh, support for and uh, also part of the Philippine Tech Leads is Sama Kasi So, ito yung mga Tech Leads ng mga different communities, Python, Android, uh, Google Developers, Microsoft, uh, Women Who Code, Coding Girls, um, the design community. Ito yung pagandaan sa Pilipinas. Kasi if you go to Singapore, if you go to other Asian countries, wala sa lang ganito. So ito yung pagandaan sa Philippines. Because we're so vibrant. We're doing uh, advocacies like this. Kaya kayo mga students, and i-grab nyo ng opportunity na ito. And recently, nagkaroon kami ng group of company nila. And part of our sponsors, the Digital Ocean, the si Rocket Post. If you want to join the community, feel free to join us. And then of course, the coding girls. Ito yung mga Maritan Dila. Coding girls of Manila. Like a coding girls. So, ito na kanina. <laughs> Kailangan natin install to, uh, to get up and running. So, install lang yung OJS, your NPM, your Cordova, and Ionic. Probably kung may 5 Mbps na speed ka, siguro mga 15 minutes. Tapos na yan. Okay, now, next is here maps. So, tanong lagi is, bakit ako magagamit ng hair maps kung meron ng Google Maps? Ah! Okay. Ipapalik ko rin yung question, bakit ko magagamit si Uber ng hair maps at bakit hindi Google Maps? And, bakit hindi ko magagamit si Facebook? Hindi na Google Maps yan, no? Si Uber. Si Uber. Si Uber. Oh! Si Facebook, they are using hair maps. Wow! Sige na po. Check mo sa Facebook. Sa Facebook, di ba yun ma? Sa Waze. Hindi, sa Waze. Hindi, hindi. Hindi, hindi. Hindi, hindi. Hindi, hindi. Hindi, hindi. One of the reasons is mas mura si Hear Maps. Number two is mas efficient yung offline maps. Ay, offline. Pero walang problema lang yung Hear Maps para hindi mo shout out dito. Ano yun? Ano yun? Magamit ka ng enterprise account. Ah! Ayaw! So, ito yan. Punta ka lang sa on how to use it. Just subscribe in Here Maps. Meron kang 3 months na free. 20 days. Ganito yung itsura niya. Um... Here maps. Okay, so let's get into numbers. See here maps. There's like eight thousand across the world, fifty-six countries, and in Europe and North America, four out of five, the mga cars that have navigation system is using here maps. And there's like four hundred here cars. Roaming around the world to collect data. Bakit sa developers, hindi masyado, wala masyadong alam yung mga developers about kay Hear. Because Hear Maps, talagang yung target market nila is mga mobile manufacturing like IBM, uh, Tesla. So I think, uh, uh, so they're more into car, car makers. Mm. Yung mga client nila. And kung titignan mo yung, yung API nila, they're, they're very extensive when it comes to traffic, uh, traffic in maps, mga ganon. That's why ginamit siya ni Uber uh, and ni Facebook. 
Ngayon, balikan natin yan kung paano ko magbibigay sa uh, So, sa Drupal naman, uh, Drupal 8 has a REST API. This is already in the core. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-install pa ng ex extension or or third-party application to make your app running. So, kailangan mo lang enable this is part of the core. And ito lang kailangan mong i-set up the uh, uh, JSON API, the RESTful web services, pag na-enable mo na yan, uh, automatically, uh, meron ka ng REST uh, service. So, wala ka na masyadong gagawin pa. Ano yung mga users? Kasi di ba REST yun? So, paano kung yung users hindi mo nakasad? Wala ka nang isasad doon. Kasi di ba sa Drupal, meron na siyang ano, uh, database for users. So, since ROS API siya, ako na yung problems with WordPress dati nung bagong pagkakabas kita yung ROS API. Nung mabas nun yung data data ng users. Oo, di ba lakas na yun? Ayong nice to go. Gano'n rin na. Sa Drupal naman, Uh, Siyempre, sino yung developer naman na i-expose yung user information, oh, oh, oh. di ba? So, meron, siya di, meron siyang pinatawag na... For anonymous users, ito lang yung... So, this is the... So, you can expose the username. It's controlled, more controlled. You're saying, I'm fine. See, see, what is this? Expose the username. And so, this one. So, this is the user. So, kailangan mong, siyempre, yung delete, hindi lang magpwede yan. <laughs> so, uh, kung ayaw mo nang delete, so, uncheck that. Kung ayaw mo nang pag-update ng, ng user information, then uncheck this. So, patch is actually used to uh, update the data. So, I'm using basic auth. So, kung, kung meron akong credentials na ginagamit dito sa web, pwede ko siyang gamitin as my credentials sa mobile app. And... So, this is just a basic Drupal. Uh, walang masyadong ginawang... Well, na, actually, nag-install lang ako ng probably five, uh, five other modules. So now, in terms of security, so sabi ka natin na ni Roel in dun sa WordPress na ginawa nila before na expose yung user information. Pero dito sa Drupal, meron tayong, uh, meron tayong ginagamit na course or ito yung cross, uh, cross origin. Any, anyone? Or ano yung, ano yung purpose na course? What's the purpose of cross-origin? Okay, sir. Anong pangalan mo, bro? Sige, sige. May price pa sticker tayo. Tayo yung nag-chance sticker pa. May sticker. Sige na! Tayo ka! We have a graded... Ladies and gentlemen. Sige. Si first by one. Ano nga? Again, ha? So, yun, tama yun, bro. Ano nga yun? Sabi ko, cross origin. So, bakit nga merong cross origin? Google! 
In your own language, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. In your own. Pwedeng Tagalog, pwedeng Saya. Oh, okay, so to give you a short, um, yeah. So we need to course para ma prevent yung like, for example I have two domains si si uh, site a .com and site b .com and I have and if I want to iframe si site b sa site a .com ko I think long time before pwede yon walang problema doon but right now uh, nagkakaroon na ng kanyan ng problema you need to have a course Parang permission na, na you allow this site B to be iframe in your site A.com site. Pag walang ganyan, it will not allow you to, uh, to iframe or to display data. Not just the not just the iframe, but also the data via HTTP. So, <clears throat> ito yung course configuration sa Drupal site. Uh, and this is just for development purposes. On production, hindi pwedeng kailangan. Allowed mo lahat ng headers. Allowed mo lahat ng methods. Or, lalo na si number 8. That's the most risky configuration to allow all origins. Um, and then, uh, you need to expose headers. And then supports credentials. Supports credentials so that you can uh, you can <coughs> uh, append your username and password whenever uh, an HTTP request is being called. Okay. Isa sa mga natutunan ko, I mean, this is not just for Drupal. I mean, it can also work on on WordPress or PHP or Laravel. Make sure that your CSRF token, ito yung token na generate para the, your course can be able to validate that you're actually sending to the, you're actually sending it from a recognized URL from your course. So make sure that your token has no white spaces. Sometimes it works on your on your mobile on your mobile simulator but it doesn't work on the actual mobile device so kailangan mo mag filter out white spaces and then uh, number two sometimes <clears throat> there are special characters kapag sa mobile web kapag sa simulator hindi siya hindi mo nakakatch yun you can only catch that on your mobile uh, on your mobile device and this one, two, and three, I've been figuring this out. Um, there are a problem. I it took me three weeks <laughs> to figure it out. I even set up three different. Uh, like deploy ako sa sa AWS, sa Linux, and ganon pa rin yung problema. So yun lang pala, white space. <clears throat> Kasi tinetest ko siya sa mobile using the yun, Ionic kanina, yung Ionic Lab. Wala nang nakikita ganun. But on the mobile device, doon pala nagkakaproblema. So I always get the uh, 503, 502 error. Now, let's discuss about uh, Are you familiar with Postman? Postman. Mr. Postman. Okay, so si Postman, ginagamit siya to simulate kung your REST backend works or if it doesn't work. So mayroon ako dito mga...
now it's going to create an article outside your uh, web. So this is just simulating your mobile application. Ito yung gamit kay Postman. Now let's check kung nag-create nga siya ng content. Here's our content. So there's a title. Dahil hindi natin sinet up yung geocode, so wala. Kung babalikan natin, if we, if we decipher kung ano yung laman ng JSON na to, <coughs> it has links, title, type, the body, ito yung, uh, and then the field chain, all the fields, actually. So this is the JSON that we attach when we Ang nagkandaan dito sa Postman is I can actually I can generate this code I can Sino yung gumap? Sino yung nag nagbabash scripting dito? Shell, Perl. So I can actually convert this into bash. bash. I can actually convert this JSON awesome. event into HTTP. That's actually what I'm using right now. I can convert this into C. If you're coding Objective-C, so pwede mong gamitin, pwede mong sundan yan. And if you're into PHP, you can use this curl. And? Pwede mong or if you are using JavaScript, Ajax. So click mo lang yan, and that will transform into Ajax type. So this is really very powerful, yung Postman. Uh, if you're into Python or .NET, so tingnan natin si Python. It's using Python 3. So ito yun. So this actually is my development time, yung Postman. So that is one of the example of the API. So it's used to generate, to delete. Uh, um, it can create, update, or add contents using your REST API. So, paano naman, how do we generate this value, yung basic, or ganyan, ganyan. Ang kagandaan dito sa authorization is, Basic log, your password, then put your password there, and automatically it 
will convert that into the authorization. Yun ang gagawin mo. Hindi mo na kailangan i-convert ba? That's for... And this is this is the API for deleting a content. Uh, so node slash uh, five six nine and then authorization and the token. So Shepper, before you Shepper, I mean um, if you're going to take it twice, before you can delete the content, you have to request first a token uh, session. Uh, uh, your uh, X, uh, X CSRF token and pwede mo siyang store locally in the browser and then once you have that pwede mong gamitin uh, to, for post so these are the different methods uh, post, put, patch delete, copy, head and some of these methods are really dangerous so we have to include lahat <laughs> so, uh, in my application, I just use get to fetch information, and then I use post to create contents or to delete contents, and then I use patch to update uh, uh, contents. Okay, I think. Uh, So, kung titignan natin yung code dun sa Ionic, this is how it looks like. I'm using the JavaScript curl method that I that I use in the Postman. So, kung mapapansin nyo kanina, yung sa Postman, halos similar lang, di ba? This is the this is the line of code where it uh, send the request. So, this is the method that I use. So, this is a post method. And then this is the payload. Payload, sorry. That payload is a variable that so yata yan yung payload that includes your links, type, the name, the your mail, your email, your password, and then uh, that payload will be attached to your uh, request. That is for the sign up REST API. And this is how it looks like in the postman. So the headers, managin yang uh, headers, required headers. Pero kaya kami mga encrypt yung password with sending. Ah, pati mo encrypt. But this is just, postman is just for development. So, makita mo talaga mo, you can reveal it from there. And this is how it looks like for how to create a use uh, a node. Ito yung kinawa natin kanina, di ba? Nakreate tayo ng content. So this is how it looks like in my Ionic. I'm using uh, this is my payload or data. This is this is the the API. Ten different requests for my image. And then I get all those IDs, and that's the time palang para makapagrate ng content. So that's 11 requests. But with the uh, Drupal 8.6, na re release uh, in the next few months, isang request na lang. Isang request na lang. And that's really a very a milestone, not just for Drupal, not just for, for Laravel or for any uh, applications that handles multiple images. So yan yung kagandahan, uh, I'm, I'm waiting for that. Para pag nag-create ako ng content, I don't need to send out multiple requests, but just one request. And now, my question is, paano, paano naman i-handle yung, yung images if, we're, if you're not gonna use uh, Base64 uh, images? Um, it's going to use... Uh, I 
forgot the, the process. Okay, now let's go to JSON API. Sino dito yung familiar with JSON API? JSON <coughs> API. Um, a few years ago, I worked with the uh, World Bank. Actually, one of my projects is um, uh, one of my one of my tasks at World Bank is uh, uh, familiar kayo sa ARM, Lano del Norte. Okay. Lano del Norte is actually one of the I think top three or top one most. Uh, Poverty line, yun yung most corrupt province. And isa dun sa mga projects namin is meron tong isang isang mayor or congressman nag-request sa World Bank to fund them for a school project. So nagbigay si World Bank and then magpadala sila ng picture. It's a concrete school. Pero nung pumunta yung agent ng World Bank. It's just a buy Google. <laughs> so, yun yung nangyayari uh, a few years ago. So, at World Bank, gumawa uh, kami ng web app to track these projects para uh, we can be able to monitor, track, monitor kung talagang may mga infrastructure na built on And this application will be used by teachers. Uh, ito naman, that was actually part of the DevEd. So, yun din, yung backend namin is profile. Tapos yung, yung gamit namin is Zamarina. That was... That was four years ago. So imagine four years ago, parang hindi pa ata lumalabas, hindi pa ganun ka popular sa Marina. But we're, we've been already using that at World Bank. And ang problema din din yung images kasi that particular forms requires multiple file uploads. So ang ginagawa namin is instead of sending it, we send it in batch. Uh, and it, it, it takes time. Kasi kung minsan kapag, kapag minas update mo siya, may naiiwang nagkakaroon ng error yung mga images. And one of the caching uh, strategy that we're using, I don't know if you're familiar with the header, yung, um, if modified, if modified, that's actually the header that we send out when you do request para detect ni na server mo if, you're, if you have a header package, like if you're using PHP or Nginx, if you're a header package, it will detect kung there are changes in your request, in your query. If it detects that there are changes, then it gets the data straight from your uh, long, I mean, uh, from your database, it's PHP. But if it detects, but if it detects, but if your application detects that there's no modification, then it gets to your cache. So, isa yun sa strategy and that's uh, JSON API can, can help you with that. Um, I'm, uh, as you've noticed, I'm using JSON API slash node because um, for get method, I'm using, uh, I'm using this. So, JSON API also works with PHP, standalone PHP. It works with WordPress or any PHP code. And the good thing is, instead of, uh, for example, if you're going to use basic request for this, for getting the data, uh, I think I need to call three requests. But with JSON API, it's just one. So very efficient. And this is how it looks like uh, for the postman. And this is the website, the JSON API. Uh, specification for building API. So this can be used in Python, uh, PHP, or any other uh, external services. 
And in Drupal, we have this module JSON API if you want to use JSON API. Uh, there's a module, and I'm using that. Okay? And if you if we decipher JSON API, um, it filters out your your condition. This is the path. The condition. So this fields node house, we can actually specify what are the fields that we want to fetch. So right now I'm fetching title, UID created, and so only five fields. If I'm not gonna use this, it will fetch all of the fields and that's very resource, uh, resource waste. Kasi hindi ko naman, in Drupal there are a couple of fields. If you have uh, multiple fields, I think hindi lang 20 or hindi lang uh, 50 fields. So, maganda dito is, you just limit it to 5 fields. Kung ano lang kailangan mo, yun lang yung i-indicate mo. And it will just give you the list of title, new ID created, and ID, and new ID. Yun lang. Wala na. Then you can also limit and sort this using the JSON. Okay, um, I think I'm ready to demonstrate the uh, consolidate natin lahat from Marina Angular and then we set we discuss about here maps. Now that's uh, I'm gonna do the demo of the application that I built. And uh, I just launched this a few weeks ago. Uh, this is actually used to submit reports for here maps. Uh, this is a collaborative project between Drupal Filipinas and uh, here maps technologies. And uh, it's purely using Drupal as a backend. And the uh, map uh, application is using uh, here maps. So let me on club. And it's actually hosted in DigitalOcean. Actually, I was requesting, I was, um, yeah. so this is actually running. So originally it was hosted at Pantheon. So sabi kanina ni Roel is dapat it should, it should run on <laughs> Digital Ocean. Eh, sabi ko, kagabi ko pa siya nabihan, ay Roel, kailangan naman ng demo account. <laughs> Binigay niya sa akin kanina, 9 o'clock na. So um, nag-set up ako ng, ng Digital Ocean account. So ito yun, si 5 hours ago. I was able to set up the needed uh, packages. I'm using 4 gig memory, 80 gig of disk, um, and this is it now. So this web, this is the since we're doing hybrid, so all the backend stuff is being stored in the Drupal side. So house number, these are actually the house number reports. Um, ginagawa niya is this receives uh, submissions from the mobile app and I'd like also to request for all Android users kung sino makakapag-install nito and makakapag-create ng content will have uh, 100 peso cash wow hi yes. di ba? Okay, so um, all you have to do is uh, you go to your mobile app, download this application, and try to create uh, 
a daytime, any any day. So subscribe, sign up, and create any content. Malalaman naman natin. This will. Yep. So I'm able to monitor kung sino nagpadala dito. Just put your name, and you will receive a uh, hundred peso cash. <laughs> so first three. Okay. So while you're doing that, I'm gonna demonstrate this. Okay. So ito na yon. Uh, sabi mo kanina, this Ioni framework uh, supports Windows, Android, and uh, Microsoft. And uh, Windows. Okay. So I'm using Android. I will log in. Okay. So when we log in, I can look around. Uh, so it's using uh, here maps, and it can collect uh, different uh, house number. Spot. And then when I click load map, it basically calls the the GPS of your mobile device. Uh, si Ro Royal, this is actually this was his question on how Ionic uh, uses the, the SDK of of the phone. So Ionic has a support to be able to use the GPS system. So when I click load map, it basically captures the GPS information that was encoded by the phone. And then I use here maps to translate this geocode into a map. So as you can see, I'm using maps here to visualize the data. Okay. Okay. So, uh, just to just a reminder, uh, I think Google Maps or Here Maps, there are six meters or ten meters na uh, uh, margin of error. Margin of error. So, if you want to use a uh, hundred percent use the uh, GPS na. Military. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's around there, uh, 6 to 10 meters. Actually, it's a little bit. Actually, the maps, the techniques, you have to move a lot so that you can get the right area. Because if you move, you can get the location of the mismo. Mm -hmm. yes. so, and sometimes it depends on the phone. So I'm using cloud phone. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm ready to uh, add another. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so submit. <laughs> Actually, uh, I already hosted this on Digital Ocean. <laughs> and uh, uh, Let me log out. Uh, so when I log in, it basically uh, request and send that send these credentials into my Drupal backend. Um. 
ng modern graphics. <laughs> may, may ano yun eh. So I can actually drag this around. Parang ways niya. Kung yung drawings, ay ano siya. Parang. Hindi natin siya sa STM na sa Robinson. Hindi, sa Mir. Then, let's check if this captures. So now, here's the data that we've set. with the uh, geo-information. I'm using leaflet in this side. Uh, uh, and let's try in the phone. So phone pala, hindi ko na update yung APK. But, guys, kung sino man yung mag-upload, uh, kasi I'll be giving 100 peso. From I? I? Oh. Oh, 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 ayan. Paano dyan gawin? May kasamang, kasama ko dyan. Yung ginawa natin kanina, that you just go to, to the house number. Tapos, uh, house number, building name, the load map. Make sure that you drag this. Because if you're not going to drag that, uh, it will not uh, error So you need to drag it so it can capture the, the actual UIP. Uh, and that's using your G your phone's GPS. Let's try it. <laughs> that is actually one of the challenges. So, <laughs> so check natin kung sino pa ang mga nag-update. Ah, wala. Wala. Ibig sabihin na to, makukuha ni Miss KMC yung tatlong... Ay! 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 So, you know, guys, if you have any questions, question. Yes, so, nakalak ba yung Ionic sa Angular? Nakalak as in Angular na pwedeng gamit ng SP? Hmm. Nakalak siya sa Ionic. And actually, I have multiple questions. So, uh, the next one would be yung sa file upload. Hindi ko SPOOL file upload. So, ano yung advantage yung as compared to like regular putting of the file? Um, so, currently I'm using, I'm converting the the files into base 64. Mm -hmm. So, kapag malaki siya, mas malaki din yung, yung data na sinisend out mo. And, uh, example lang, if you're sending a 2 MB uh, file that will take time depending on the internet connection. So, uh, um, as much as possible, make it to 
256 or less than mm. less than that range. Um, that's right. Uh, right now, I have uh, I support multiple multiple submission. It can cater 20 images in one mm. upload uh, in one request. So yeah, but uh, wouldn't like you know, converting you know, a file to base 64 wouldn't that like add an overhead? So yes. Kaya yun yung ginagawa ko ngayon, I convert this into uh, base 64. So pag sinend ko yun ng, ng, if I send 20 items, uh, pwede nga may internet, uh, I have a 5 Mbps connection, uh, siguro mga 30 seconds to upload the uh, images. But so, then again, it depends on the stability of your internet connection. So basically, you're saying uh, it's for like dev demo lang for product for production. For production, it's the same. Um, for production, it's the same as long as it's it's basically hindi siya ganong ka as much as possible. It uh, goes around range of six feet. 